In early African civilizations, hairstyles could indicate a person's family background, tribe, and social status. Just about everything about a person's identity could be learned by looking at their hair. Many people believe that hair, given its close location to the skies, was the conjugate for spiritual interaction with God. Then came slavery. A lot of the slaves took their African customs with them, like using their specially designed combs, which were white teeth combs, um, because African American hair is very fragile. And out of all of the different types of hair, it's probably the most fragile. And if you would, were to use a fine tooth comb, then you will probably just rip the hair out and do a lot of damage. So therefore, they include their own personal customs. Now, during the 19th century, slavery was abolished in much of the world. However, many black people felt the pressure to fit in with mainstream white society and adjusted their hair accordingly. Black people felt compelled to smooth their hair and the texture just so they could fit in easier with white society and camouflage in better so that they could get more jobs or better jobs. A lot of the black people over here in America and in England were straightening their hair um, in the 1930s. The Rastafari theology developed from Jamaica. Um, the ideas came from Marcus Garvey. And this was when the dreadlocks came into play. Um, a lot of the believers were forbidden to cut their hair and instead would twist it into dreadlocks. So the dreadlocks were more like a religious thing um, from my interpretation. I'm thinking it was more to do with religion um, than just a style. It's not really clear where the dreadlocks originated from, but what I can say is that it's an old style. You can even read in the Old Testament when um, Samson lost his locks of hair, um, he lost his strength. And on the History Channel, they depict Samson as a black man with dreadlocks. And when you read the scriptures, it kind of seems to coincide with what the History Channel said, well, showed um, about his hair. So they talked about dreadlocks long before um, Marcus Garvey and his religious movement. The profile of the religion that Marcus Garvey started, it grew significantly in the latter half of the 20th century. The dreadlock hairstyle became very popular after the success of the musician Bob Marley in the 1970s. Um, you could see dreadlocks very common, commonly worn in British cities. Along with the afro and dreadlocks, it remains the most distinctive black hairstyle among other ethnic groups. Then came the 1960s, civil rights era. This time was when the afro hairstyle came in, which emerged in the 1960s during the civil rights movement. This was a time for black people when they were proud and they exuded empowerment. And it was also known as a symbol of rebellion. The Afro style became very popular. Even white America decided to wear this style, even though it was a symbol of black pride. Um, with it was birthed the comb, the clenched fist comb that symbolized black pride. Myself, all of us were born with our hair like this, and we just wear it like this because it's natural. Because uh, the reason for it, you might say, is like a new awareness among black people that their own natural appearance, its physical appearance, is beautiful and it's pleasing to them because black people are aware, and white people are aware of it too because white people now want uh, natural wigs, they want wigs like this. Dig it? Isn't it beautiful? overdue. I think it's very long overdue. I think that it never should have taken a step back from the 70s. It should have just continued to boom. 
and just the fact that we even have a natural movement now it, it shouldn't be called a movement it should just it should just take place it should have never stopped taking place from the 70s i can't imagine what our culture would be like if you know everything had been the same from that that point on i think that there would be a lot more positivity going on in our culture so um, I, I hope i hope that it's just the start of something great the media world has probably done more harm than good when it comes to representing women of color. Often it seems that only a certain type of black woman with a certain type of look is accepted on a larger platform. Um, ever so often I'll get an email, you know, asking me to go back to the straight look that some people think, some men and women think that the straighter, longer hair looks better on me. And usually my response is that the straighter, longer hair does not grow from my scalp naturally and it's a lot to keep up <laughs> that straight long hair. And so right now, I'm comfortable with my natural hair. And plus, in the television business, we all have consultants, not just here at NBC 12, there are consultants for all of the stations here. And basically all of the women, black, white, whatever, we all look the same. We have the same type style dresses, we have the same type haircuts, long, straight, or even short, straight. Somebody needs to be a little bit different. Why not me? Not me. More times than not for black women, the criticism of hair comes from other African Americans. Negative words or looks are commonplace in a crowd of your own. So the question becomes, are we as a people working on our own demise? You know, again, I haven't received a lot of negative emails at all, but I remember it was one email and it was from a, a gentleman who said that he and his family uh, didn't think that that was perhaps the most professional look and that it would stop me perhaps from moving on up in this career. Well, first of all, sir, you're not in this business. And second of all, I get more calls now with natural hair from outside of this, uh, outside of this news station than I did ever before because it's something different. And it's me naturally. When people watch me on TV, I'm not there to look pretty. I'm there to deliver the news. And you take it or leave it. <laughs> you know, that's what I say. You know, I'm, I'm not here. And that's what usually what I respond, especially to the men that email me. I'm not here. I'm not here getting paid to look pretty for you. I, I, I appreciate you thinking. <laughs> you, I appreciate you thinking that. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here to deliver the news. And so, I mean, you have to tap into what you know, because we all have a gift. You have to tap into what makes you special and be happy with that. Natural hair means that a hair has not been treated with any chemical relaxers. An afro, that small or voluminous halo of highly textured hair that floats above some black women's scalps, does not mean that she's about to set off the revolution. There is nothing dreadful about dreadlocks. They're also not a sign that someone smells, sells, or smokes marijuana. And by the way, they're locks, not dreads. And a black woman who chemically straightens her hair is not trying to be white. When in doubt, of course, the best course of action is to understand a black woman by what's in her head, not what's on it.